Greetings Swangolians and welcome back to Swango. Today we're going to be continuing our 101 series with part 5 and we're going to be going over some gadgets and you will see some interesting information that uh, maybe even some of you experienced players didn't quite know. So, back here at Caspian, I'm going to go ahead and spawn US deployment. I'm going to switch to my medic class with my medic kit. Okay, here we go. Spawn right up by the chopper. And so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to place a medic kit right here. Here's your first aid. Okay. I'm going to simulate my own death. I'm going to suicide. All right. Now let's just assume that I've placed that somewhere within the depths of the battlefield, maybe close to an objective or just outside of its perimeter. And now I'm going to switch to my engineer class with my mines. I'm going to spawn US deployment We're back up here next to the other chopper. Now I want you to pay attention to the mini map. See the chopper's to my right. Got the tank right here up in front of me. And just in front of the tank, there's something on the mini map with a circle and kind of like a pill going through diagonally. Now, as we approach that, we see that's a med kit. So when you're along the battlefield and you're hurt you might want to glance down at your mini map and see if there's somewhere around you that someone has placed a medic kit because there it is now i also want you to notice that i came back as a different class and my med kit is still there now people can come and use that whenever they like so if you put it in a good spot you're going to get squad and team re uh, heals from that wherever you place it now i have my mines and we just did the video of uh, me actually in the battlefield and showing you some of these icons and what these things look like. And boy, I hope I don't have to do that again anytime soon. Because uh, there's so many people, so much chatter to compete with. So if there's dead time, if there's dead audio space in that previous video, it's because I edited out all the stuff of other people chatting and screaming and their mics clicking and screeching and... So I got rid of all that stuff to save you guys the trouble. And man, I hope I don't have to do that again anytime soon. But it was fun. So notice now I've placed some mines. I, I guess I do not have the explode specialization on currently. But so I only have three mines that I can use. These are the icons they look like. This is what they look like on the ground. Uh, if they're not spotted by the enemy, they have no icons above them at all. So they can still see them laying on the ground, but the icons themselves aren't there. And notice that they're blue. And the last one I placed down C4. These icons are exactly the same, but the explosives always turn up blue. What we're going to do now is suicide, simulated death, and we're going to come back with the support class. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to show you... I'm going to show you the EOD bot. I'm going to go ahead and do it. You, you need to know what it looks like if you see this thing cruising around. Okay? You see that little... looks like a question mark to me. Right next to the star. Or it's, you know, underneath that uh, health bar. It, I don't know. It looks like a question mark to me. Whatever. Whenever you see that icon cruising through the map, if it's yours, it's going to be blue or green. You know, if it's your squad, it's going to be green. If it's the enemies and it's been spotted, it's going to be red. If it hasn't been spotted, you're just going to see this weird thing cruising down the street. Now, beware, for you new guys, this thing can kill you. And that's why that it's cruising around the map, most likely. Okay, so that's what the EOD bot looks like. That's what his icon looks like. And now we're going to go ahead and suicide. Simulate our death. And I'm going to come back in the support class. I'm going to move to support class. I've got ammo box, and I've already shown you what C4 looks like in my previous video. Uh, you can see what claymores look like in why claymores fail video. So I'm just going to go straight to mortar. Let's see, I've got sprint. Yeah, this should be. There we go. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and. Oh, we got the mortars. Now, something you need to realize 
angry Jeep. All right, right around here should do it. You cannot deploy a mortar in your base. You actually have to be a fair distance away from your base before you can deploy your mortar onto the battlefield. So deploy the mortar. And you can see that that's what it looks like when it's unmanned. When it is manned, don't try to knife the guy because it's not going to work unless they've done some patch that they didn't tell us about. You're going to have to shoot him. So just go ahead and shoot him or throw a grenade at him or do whatever you have to do to, to kill him. But don't let him continue using his mortar. He can see you if he's looking at you from the front, whichever direction he's, he's facing. If you come behind him, he has got no clue that you're behind him. Now notice the mini-map. Mini-map's got the blue explosive shell icon. That's the mortar. If I go ahead and pause the game, I had to get out of the way. There we go, I'm a little bit further. You can see where its placement is on the entire map. So I'm going to fast forward this part for you. Here's some rounds, pick them up. Now we've returned back to the top of Caspian. I'm still in the same class. I had placed an ammo pack here. Now when I back up, you'll notice that it is the bullet or ammo icon in a circle. So when they're the crates on the ground in the battlefield, they have circles around them. When you see your teammates, they'll have squares around them. Okay, that's the difference of the icons on your mini-map. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to simulate my death suicide. And we're going to return as the recon class. And we'll start at the beginning with tugs. So we deploy US deployment. I'm a little bit further away from where I want to be. I've been setting everything up on top of the hill, so we're gonna take Mr. Loud Angry Jeep. Ditch him. And now this is the tug. This is a motion sensor. I'm gonna place this over here. Huh. It's a Jeep exploding. Now that is what that icon looks like right there. Turn my flashlight off. There we go. That is your motion sensor icon. Now it is got sonar. You hear that beep? That beep can be heard by the enemy as well. So they will use it to try to hone in on your position because the closer they get, the louder it gets. Now this is a very specific beep, so remember these sounds because all of these different recon gadgets have a different sound. Then we have the radio beacon. Now I know I didn't go into this when I actually went into classes, I failed to do that, I skipped right over it. The radio beacon is a spawn point. Your squad mates and yourself can spawn on the radio beacon wherever you place it in the level. Now remember. Whichever way that you're facing is the way that they're going to spawn into the world. So don't place it facing a corner. Go to the corner, face out of the corner, and then place your spawn beacon. Now, notice that icon. The upside down triangle, the one that's normally a player, and it's got the little circle around it. That is the, the radio beacon icon. And listen, you hear the static? It's got the same beep. But this has got static. That's the difference between these two audibles. Because this is also giving off a beep which the enemy can hear. And the further away, they will try to use this to hone in on your position. So we are going to suicide. And we're going to come in with the Soflame. Okay, back up here at the top of the hill. 
Now notice when I spawned in, my ra I, my radio beacon's gone. So anytime you die, you can spawn in on your old radio beacon, but as soon as you do, it's going to destroy. And if you don't spawn in on your radio beacon, say you spawn in on a teammate, it's still going to destroy. So you're going to have to replace your spawn beacon every time that you respawn as recon. Okay? I'm going to pick this up just because of the noise. And go ahead and place this soul flame down. Now look how tiny this thing is. <laughs> it is. It's like the binoculars. That is the icon. You see that? Square, and then there's some kind of... looks like a little robot inside of there. That's basically your soul flam icon. Now, from the front... Here, let me aim this thing up a little bit. Use the right trigger to, to deploy it. So you can leave it, and then wherever you... You can go somewhere else on the battlefield, and then go, Oh, yeah. Let's see if there's anybody around me. You know, you can always... It's kind of your own little backup you can use it for sometimes. But if you get in front of it... You can see that laser... That's, when you're in a chopper and you see that, you need to shoot this thing down because it's going to lock onto you really fast and anybody with a guided missile is going to shoot you down as fast as they can. Now, we're going to simulate our death, suicide, and come back with the MAV. Select the MAV, pop back in. Again, we're a little further than I would like to be. I'm trying to keep all of these inside the same mini map. So we're going to deploy this MAV. And you see that icon? It pretty much looks like it pretty much looks like the MAV, okay? You see that thing flying around? That's its icon. Yours, theirs, whatever. You know the colors now. Now listen to it. It's giving off a beacon. This is the same kind of beacon as the as the tug. Now this thing is currently using its motion sensor. Just as good as flying around. So you can park this somewhere and get all those motion sensor assists if you leave it in the right place. Now also notice that all my other gadgets are gone. The so flam's gone, the tugs is gone, my radio beacon's gone. Every time you die, when you come back, when you spawn back into the game, your gadgets as recon do not return. However, notice I still have my med pack, I still have my ammo pack, my mines are still here. I've, this, I've already gone, this is the fourth and last class. And all my stuff is still here. So switching classes in a match can get you to level up multiple classes very quickly. Especially if you put these crates in the right place. You'll be leveling up so fast. Oh my goodness. So, I have an MAV right there. You only get one. Now I'm going to destroy this thing. If it'll let me. I might have to shoot it with the tank. See if a tank will do it. Wow, can't kill my own MAV. Well, now that is just a horrible, horrible example. How about this? Put the radio beacon up, so I have no more radio beacons. I'm clicking right on the D pad, and nothing's happening. I go over to this ammo pack. Listen. You hear that? I have a new radio beacon. If my radio beacon gets destroyed, if my MAV gets destroyed, if my SoFlam, any of my gadgets get destroyed, all I have to do, go find this ammo pack and get it back. Look at that, another MAV. Place the MAV, that one dies. Here you go, radio beacon, ready? Boom, you see that? Here we go, ready? MAV, boom. You just can keep, the ammo pack just keeps giving them up. It doesn't just give you ammo, guys. You can refill your gadgets as well. Now, here's the beauty of this whole thing. I'm going to suicide here, simulate my death, and I'm going to come back as an engineer. Now, this comes up very handy, especially when you're very close to a spawn trap. Uh, or, you know, you're spawn trapping a team. Oh, God, let's please get rid of this AOD bot. Thank you. And this should be on explosions as well.
So we'll go back into deployment. So here are the mines I placed earlier. I didn't have the squad explosion specialization equipped, but now I do. So look here. Boom. 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 Now I have six on the field. But I still have some. So let's watch what happens when I place a new one. You see that? This is the cycle I was talking about in the previous video. That is the best example that I could possibly give you. And check it out. My ammo pack is still here. My health pack. My mines. And now I have a javelin next to an ammo crate. Unlimited javelins, guys. If you place these crates in the proper spot, you can become a one-man wrecking crew. Because you can just keep going out and you know going on a rambo run try to get a couple of kills and die in the midst of it and come back as the class that you need to to replenish mines that have exploded or uh, replenish an ammo pack that's been destroyed and just keep the cycle going you can control an entire area just by yourself just by switching to the classes after you die it's amazing amazing little trick I highly suggest you try it. It's a lot of fun, especially in tandem with a teammate. So then you don't have to do it as many times. You each have to only do it twice. You know, one guy comes in as med, the other one comes in as support. Then you both come in as, you know, recon and engineer. And you guys are set up, you know what I mean? Wrecking crew, wrecking crew. So that pretty much covers, I believe, all the gadgets. I'm not going to go into uh, uh, C4 yet. That's something that we'll get into a little bit later. But guess what, guys? We're pretty much done with all this stuff, and we are going into vehicles right away. Oh, I'm excited because that's why people come to play BF3. And I know you guys have been waiting for it, and I've got some very good information for you. Uh, a lot of things have changed since the patch, so videos that you may have watched are no longer valid probably. You are going to get it all here, and we're going to start off with buggies. And I know it sounds lame, but buggies are fun. And we will get into a little bit of the C4 with the buggies. All right? So, this is the OG Bird signing off. And remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video, share it on Facebook, share it on Twitter, get it out there, and happy gaming.